today is day eight of the whole alien shit thing. Um, I did not sleep well last night at all. Um, yeah, I joked yesterday that I didn't think I was going to be having any nightmares or anything, and, you know, it wasn't that. It was just, well, obviously we got a, an ice storm last night, and, you know, the ice was coming in, and it's like every breaking branch out in the woods you can hear outside. You know, I'm just wondering, is that some dude coming up at the house? I don't want to be sexist. It could be a, a horrifying woman, too. I don't know. But uh, I think maybe I got three, maybe four hours of sleep out of, like, nine last night. You know, it just sucks because, you know, if you had an extra person, you know, you know that they'd have it covered so you could just kind of relax. But you just, every little noise. You know, you're just wondering, like, oh, is that somebody? Whatever. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't sleep well last night. and uh, Tonight's probably going to be the same, you know? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Not feeling awesome today, but it's beautiful out this morning. It's really, really nice. you got this ice storm, like I was saying. It's just gorgeous, but uh, it just sucks. <laughs> uh, I'm doing the security stuff today. I've been grabbing pallets like this one behind me. I've had a bunch of them stored up. They're made out of this nice strong oak. And well, I'll show you what I'm doing. Um, I'm uh, putting them up over the windows just to, uh, uh, you know, just not, not make it impossible to get in, but make it really difficult to get in, make someone have to struggle. So well, you can see on this window here behind me, uh, you know, it just, uh, yeah, you know, it make it makes it difficult to get in there. So if somebody's trying to like squirm in, they'll be like half hanging in and out of the window and I'll have plenty of time to do something about it. It just makes it harder to get in and that's what I'm trying. I know that I can't make things impossible, you know, but you just try to make it more difficult and slow people down and that gives you time to to do whatever. Uh, I'm also uh, before all this happened I'd had some supplies for doing uh, you know, trip sensors and things like that. And uh, I've been setting those up, uh, running wires out uh, to different uh, locations around here, and uh, just kind of, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I, just, I haven't slept very much. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've just been uh, uh, setting it up so that, uh, you know, people pass through a certain area, uh, there'll be a, a sensor that'll, uh, that'll flick off and I can get a sense whether somebody's coming through. Of course, you get tripped by a branch or an animal or anything too, but... It's something, the problem is with uh, the snow, it's all covered up in ice and it's hard to conceal the wires because there's like, you know, this layer of crusty ice and wherever I'm laying the wires out, it's really obvious that there's like a trail there. So uh, I'm kind of hoping we'll get a little more snow and just kind of bury that and cover it up. But yeah, I'm doing that today. And, uh, uh, and then I'm gonna do some fortifications inside the house as well. In order to give myself some sense of whether there's anybody approaching the house without my having to be on constant 360 degree watch 24 seven, even when I'm asleep, uh, I decided to set up some trip alarms. I have, uh, I didn't buy any trip alarms before this whole fiasco happened. Maybe that would have been a good idea, but I, I did set aside a low cost box of supplies that I knew that I could use to build some if I ever felt that I I needed to do so, so that's what I'm doing today. Uh, it didn't cost me very much, very much, and you'll see why uh, in here. I've got clothespins, some thumbtacks, uh, fishing line, you know, monofilament line, uh, you know, a bunch of wire, and uh, also some little speakers, buzzers, and uh, LED lights. And I, I just got these from an electronics store, very, very inexpensive. Um, I'll just show you what the the buzzer sounds like here. I got a nine volt battery. So, there you go. Uh, and the reason I chose lights and the buzzer is because uh, the buzzer will get my attention if I'm not right near the, uh, the device I'm gonna build. Uh, and then once I'm alerted with the buzzer, I can run over and I wanna array the lights on a panel with little labels next to each light so that I'll be able to tell which trips, uh, trip wire I, if I bought a bunch of buzzers, it'd be kind of hard. I'd have to be putting my ear up to each buzzer and see which one's going off. If I have lights, I can very quickly see, you know, which trip trip sensor was activated. So um, the way that this all goes together is uh, you take uh, take the thumbtacks 
and um, each thumbtack gets attached to the end of one of these wires. This is just wiring that I'd had from some old Cat5 cable. Uh, I'm also, I've also got a bunch of Romex wire and stuff, and I'm just going to kind of make, make do with all that. So uh, the, uh, the thumbtacks get twisted onto the, uh, onto the wire here. And you want to get it really, really tight. It would be good if I had a soldering iron to, to do this, but I, I, don't, I don't have a functioning soldering iron right now. Um, so, you know, I got to do with what I got. I, I, I would feel a lot better if I was soldering these, but I, I don't have the ability to do that. So I'm just really tightening them down really well on there. And each one of these uh, thumbtack wires gets put inside of the clothespin. Now I'm going to open up the clothespin here and take the, uh, the thumbtack, put it, put it right in here, and then take my pliers, open them up, and I'm going to press the thumbtack right down into the clothespin piece. So I've got one just like that. So now when this makes contact with the other wire, it should complete the circuit. I'm going to do the other one now. And I am really feeling beat today. I, uh... I thought I heard something. Uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm feeling really tired. I'm hoping I can get a little bit more rest tonight. All right, so I'm going to twist this one down on the wire here. All right. And open the pliers up. The uh, obviously the benefit of this is that I will be able to sleep a little bit better tonight because I'll have some sense that if somebody's approaching the house, I'll get a little bit of a warning. You know, it's not that bad. I mean, unless it's like a huge group of people, it's probably not that bad if uh, you know, as long as I know about it in advance. So, so I'm going to take these uh, two close pins and put them together or these two clothespin halves, put them together. All right, so now when the clothespin opens up, it, the circuit is interrupted, and when it closes, it is uh, activated. And I'll just connect this in with the buzzer and the battery here, and we'll try it out. So there, it works. Um, so the next thing that I need to do is to, uh, oh man, am I just, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, my brain is not functioning today at all. You need more than, like, no sleep. Uh, the next thing to do is to take the, the fishing line and I'm going to attach it to a piece of plastic. Now I just have this, this trash, just a, a uh, toothpaste uh, package just the plastic from a uh, toothpaste container. And I'm gonna cut out a piece of plastic here. All right, so now I've got a little piece of plastic and what, what's gonna happen with this is that this will just stick between the two contacts here. So it keeps the circuit from being uh, completed. And then I'm going to tie the other end of this to some of the monofilament line and if someone bumps across that line it's going to pull this out and it'll complete the circuit and I'll get a auditory and, uh, and light signal back here at the house and I'll know that, uh, that somebody's on their way in. So I'm going to make a few more of these and then I'm going to go out and uh, uh, actually plant them at their various locations. I have a couple places picked out that I think are going to be the most likely places that people would would be coming through. So I got to do a bunch of these and then I got to do that. There were a number of areas where I'm setting up these trip lines but uh, this area is a little bit more challenging than some of the others. Uh, going across a road, pretty obvious. There's some other paths that I have around my house. Uh, but this area here is pretty wide and it's under a canopy of uh, trees that are dropping a lot of debris. And the whole area is like this. Uh, so I'm, I'm nervous that I'm gonna get a lot of fa uh, false alarms off of this one. 
but uh, it's an important area because it is a major way for people to come from the, the backwoods, there's a state park back there, uh, and come through this area. This area connects with a lot of trails in the state park, and this is a particularly good spot because it's, it's a place where it really funnels down. If I try to set up lines anywhere else, I'd have to really go across large, large areas. This is about as narrow as it gets. There's a hill on this side, and on this side over here, uh, there's kind of a creek that runs through, so, and there's a very natural path. So if people are gonna be coming through, I think they're gonna be coming through this area. So despite the fact that I have a lot of branches to kind of fall here, it's really the most sensible place to be putting anything. What I've done here is I've uh, run the wire down from the hill up there all the way down here, and I use Roman kind of a, a heavy gauge wire to get down here because we're just using 12 volt uh, signals and uh, DC current over long stretches you know loses its uh, its oomph so so I was trying to use some uh, some heavier gauge wire just to get down here but then I've got this thin wire once I get down into the area I've uh, put down a, a stick here I've wrapped the, uh, the clothespin with the wire around the stick and uh, uh, kind of flip the wire around the clothespin once, kind of as a, as a tension relief. And now I've got my, uh, you know, plastic piece that goes right into the middle there, and my uh, monofilament line that I'm going to run across here. And again, hopefully the idea is it's a natural funneling sort of area with hillside and wetlands and things like that. I think this is where people are going to come through. And I've got to repeat this at all the other locations as well. An important element of this whole alarm system that I've set up is the ability for me to actually respond if one of my sensors gets tripped. It's not going to notify the police. I'm not going to call 911. I actually have to personally do something about that. And uh, what I've done uh, along those lines is uh, right behind my bed, you know, where I sleep, I set up that piece of cardboard with all the lights on it. So if I get woken up in the middle of the night, I can quickly assess where things are. I actually used uh, as a stand for it, I'm, I'm balancing it up on top of uh, my old V-Line gun safe. I'm not really using the gun safe anymore just because, I mean, you know, the world gets invaded by aliens, you know, shit changes. <laughs> I'm, I'm just keeping the pistol up there. Uh, but uh, this way I can really quickly assess the situation. And it's important that you, oh, something's going off. It's the one by the big pine tree that's, that's down that way. Okay, uh, it's freaking freezing. I'm gonna grab the pistol and uh, I guess put a coat on and check it out. I just got an alert off of the, uh, the sensor down in the valley by the large tree and I'm gonna check it out. That was the one I was thinking, you know, might have been prone to false alarms, but uh, you know, I gotta presume that it's real, so going down to check that out now. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, just a stick here. You see, uh... Okay, there's the uh, piece. All right, so I'll just run this back over here again and we'll clip it back in and I don't know, I hope this thing doesn't keep me up all night going false alarm every 10 minutes. Coming back, I, I saw these two really large ships flying up over the forest and uh, something actually happened that got my attention that even made me look up in the first place and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what that is in a second, but I also had kind of a, a, a neat thought, and I didn't really have to do much shoveling today. You know, I, I shoveled, like, paths to the, you know, the woodshed and stuff, but I didn't have to shovel out my car, and I realized that shoveling's really not that big a deal when you don't have to shovel out your driveway, because, you know, that car's not going anywhere. <laughs> so, silver lining right there. Uh, yeah, anyway, uh, what made me look up in the first place was a couple of those drones were flying over and they it seemed like they were shooting each other. Here's a here's a clip of what I was able to capture. Uh, you know, it didn't look like they were trying to attack each other and if they were, they weren't doing a very good job of it. I mean, it seemed more like a couple of little kitties playing with each other or something. Like just fooling around, having a good time. I I that's what it seemed like. I mean, I I'm just inferring nothing got destroyed. But anyway, it made me look up and see these Two giant things flying overhead. Let's 
it's going off again. Jeez. What is it? Yeah, it's just the same thing again. I'm just going to go run and reset the trip line. My concern with these trip wires is that, especially with all the snow falling off the trees, there just seems to be a lot of false, false positives, false alarms going on. But I don't see as I have any other choice other than just to reset them. So, can I help you? Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.